Hold this. Wear this shirt because sponsorships. You know. Uh, I'd wear this, but it's too cold. <laughs> Do I look silly? It's too cold to wear without it. Ooh! Look at that. So in case you couldn't tell by the title, today we're gonna to be installing a Mishimoto aluminum radiator on my E36 M3. This radiator fits on E30s as well, um, pretty much all inline six motors uh, that were on the E30 and E36 as well, non M3s. Um, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure it doesn't fit the M3 E30 though, but for the most part, anything that's like an M50, M52, um, I believe even the M20, um, S52, S50, all fits on this. So in this video, we're gonna be showing you guys how to install the radiator, and I'll also be talking about the benefits of running this aluminum radiator over the OEM radiator that comes with the car. And you know, it's gonna be a chill little vlog, show you guys how to install it. I know a lot of you have F30, so a lot of you aren't gonna be using this video for your own personal use, but if you are an owner of an E36 or an E30, if you enjoyed this video, please drop a like, drop a comment down below, and check out some of my other videos. So yeah, let's get right into this. Before I start this video off really fast, I'd like to give a huge shout out to F-Squared Performance for these t-shirts, not the radiator the t-shirts. No, I'm just kidding. Huge shout out for sending me this Mishimoto radiator. I really appreciate it. Um, check out their eBay store down below in the description. I will leave a link for you guys. Um, they have a lot of stuff for the vast majority of BMWs. So check them out. Um, I will leave a link down below in the description. So let's get right into this. So this job for the most part isn't crazy difficult. It's just a matter of, you know, taking the radiator out and also adding new coolant, draining the coolant. In my case, we're lucky because the previous owner actually swapped out the clutch fan and put in an electric fan. So that makes our job a lot easier. Um, if you don't have an electric fan, you'll actually need a fan clutch tool. So, you know, you can take out the fan and then it'll be easier to take out the radiator itself. But yeah, that's really it. We're just gonna take this radiator out and drain the coolant, put in the new radiator, add coolant, bleed the system, and we're pretty much done. So the tools we need for this job are a 10 millimeter wrench, a socket wrench, an eight millimeter, a Phillips screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, a gallon of coolant, a gallon of distilled water, and of course, rhino ramps. All right, so we're gonna have to take the radiator out and we're gonna have to drain the radiator. So in order to do that, we have a bunch of eight millimeter screws holding up this belly pan. So we're gonna wanna take those out. So step one would obviously be to put the car up on rhino ramps or jack it up because we need to access underneath the car. And then step two would be to take out the eight millimeter screws on the bottom to get access to the bottom of the radiator. So it was actually held in by a bunch of seven millimeter screws, but on your car, it's probably gonna be eight. This is what I was talking about. <laughs> is that my drain plug? Yeah. Does it come with new drain plug? Yeah. Okay, so after you can get access to the bottom of the radiator, just loosen the drain plug. It's held in by a flathead? It's like a big ass Phillips or a flathead. You can use either. Oh, yeah, yeah. But they always break, like after they're old. Oh, okay. So we're gonna see how we manage to get this one out. Just don't get coolant on your face. And make sure you have a drain pan because you don't want to make a crazy mess. And as you can see, it's draining all the coolant. Um, what can you do to make a drain faster again? Okay, that's what you do. <laughs> And then you loosen the expansion tank's cap and it comes out pouring. Sheesh. Is there any way? Yo, watch the flashlight, getting getting sprayed. What? Oh, it got all over the camera. It's working. No! Rip lens. As you guys can see, the coolant's all coming out. It's flowing. So once you loosen this hose clamp, it actually gets more air into the system, which allows the coolant to pour out faster. That is if you're losing your patience. This plastic shroud. There's a Phillips over here, 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 and here. Now we just take this off. You stick a flathead in this, right? 
Oh. Alrighty, once you get this off, put this away somewhere safe. And once you've gotten this hose removed, this hose, and pretty much everything out of the way, you can start unclipping these, because this is what's really holding in the radiator in place. So you do that by sticking a flathead in between. Kinda be a little careful, you gotta fiddle with it, it's a little tricky, but yeah, that's pretty much how you do it. I don't know how to explain that, but you just press straight in. As straight as you can go. Yep, and tilt them back. It's like, kinda like a two piece thing pops out. Just so be gentle though, because this is plastic and you can break it and you don't want these to break because you have to use it again. You have a temp sensor right here. The clip is on the bottom, so you gotta press it. Now you gotta take out the lower radiator hose. You got another clamp right here. It's gonna come pouring out now, right? A little. Yeah, just And now we take out the level sensor connector right here. This is on the bottom too, I think. This measures the coolant level. Tells you when it's low. Is that what that's for? Yeah. Wow. So fancy. 1998. That's disconnected. Boom. What is that? That can't be good. I don't know. Yeah, there's a couple things that tend to happen when you have an older car. You find screws that aren't really screwed in, you find wires that are chewed up, and you just find things that just shouldn't be there. And it's, it's, it's fun. It's like you learn more about the car. It gives the car a character. Oh. See, your stock reader is really, really failing. This is a piece of, plastic piece of that. Of this. Yeah. So there you go. Perfect example of why this Mishimoto aluminum radiator is a really good upgrade and a perfect example of why it is better than the OEM one in many ways. One of the ways being that all these pieces right here, these hoses and, and the parts where the hose connect to are all of aluminum. I don't know if you guys can see it right there. They're all of aluminum. So things like that don't happen. You have a piece of plastic coming off into your hose where the coolant actually goes to the engine. So, you know, you don't want that. And that's why it's an advantage to have a fully aluminum radiator versus this stock piece of crap. Okay, so the previous owner or whoever installed this electric fan actually didn't um, leave a plug for to power it. So it's actually like wired together like this so we can't unplug it. So we actually have to take the electric fan out of the radiator in order to take the radiator out. So we're gonna do that really fast off camera because I know a lot of you might not even have an electric fan and if you do, it's probably having a plug because it's such a small thing to do but the person who sold it was probably being lazy. So we're gonna do this off camera really fast. So give us a second. All right, so check out this difference. So this is the OEM radiator and here is the Mishimoto radiator. Um, this one looks so much nicer, so much cleaner. So like I was mentioning earlier, you can see that the plastic pieces the kind of like the this edges of it have broken off and they're actually in the hose, the coolant hose. Um, with an aluminum radiator, you don't really have to worry about any of that stuff because as you can see, look, this is all, all aluminum. And this one, it's plastic. So in terms of longevity, this one is better. Apparently it actually runs cooler as well. Size wise, they're pretty much exactly the same. I'm pretty sure that one's a little bit lighter than this one. Um, but yeah, look how much cleaner and nicer that's gonna look and much better cooling we're gonna get versus this one, which has been changed in like 2008. So that was probably around like 100 something K miles for this car. So even though this has been changed, you can see how much wear and tear these items go through. Another thing I almost forgot to mention with Mishimoto, you also have a lifetime warranty with their products, as you can see right here. So that's one bonus that we also have with this one. Along with that, it would be really nice if I eventually get some nice silicone hoses for better cooling and a bigger expansion tank. Mishimoto actually offers that as well. And I'm pretty sure you can also find that on F squared as well. This in the box, which is pretty cool. I think it's installation instructions, a Mishimoto sticker and a penguin that is probably an air freshener or something. Something. So it actually turns out that my electric fan is also Mishimoto, if you can see closely. Literally it says Mishimoto. That's crazy. So it'll match perfectly well with this radiator. Sweet. All right, so now we're gonna take the radiator and we are going to get it nice and ready. You gotta put this thingy from your stock one right there, so you can so it sits on that when you install it. Because there's a little thing right here. I can't remember what it is. Right there and it sits right on top of that. Take those plastic caps off. To go. We also have to unscrew 
We'll do that later, actually, for the temp sense, right? Actually, no, let's do that now. All right, yes. Yeah, so it'll be easier. Might as well do it now. So we're gonna unscrew that. We're gonna take Sensor from the old yeah. radiator. We might have to grab a wrench and unscrew this. An adjustable wrench, so make sure you grab one and unscrew this, and then you can put that onto the new radiator. So let's do that now. I think the rest you can just do it like this, yeah. So once you unscrew this, make sure this washer is on it as well. We're gonna go to the new radiator. We're gonna unscrew, oh, Mike already unscrewed it, but this will be in your radiator. Don't worry, take this out. And just grab your new or old thingy-majig and screw this thingy-majig into that thingy-majig. You should grab your wrench, maybe tighten it just a little, nothing crazy, just snug like it was. And that should be good. That's the drain. Wow, that's so much better than the yo yo The plastic one, yeah. So even the drain plug for the radiator is aluminum instead of plastic. So if in case you ever need to drain, you know, and get put new coolant in, it's not gonna break you're it. not going to break it. You can just, you know, reuse it over and over. Quality. Quality. You just write I-K-E right after the M. All my, all your fangirlies will do that. Right, Mike? Yeah. Nipple, right? Yep. Boom, shakalaka. All right. Bringing it back to 1998. All right, so this part, you don't really have to do if you have a clutch fan, but since we have an electric fan, like we mentioned earlier, we're gonna have to use these rivet thingy majig, zip tie wannabe thingies, put it through this so we can hold the, the electric fan to the back of the radiator to keep it cool. Cause it has nothing to be held onto cause this car has originally had a clutch fan. So we have to use these, we have to put it through this and put it through the electric fan to tie it onto it. So it kind of like clamps it together like that. So we're gonna do four, so like one, two, three, four. Yeah. And then we'll have a nice fit. So before my fan was actually like shaking a lot and that wasn't good because that's why, if you guys saw it when I showed it, it was a Mishimoto electric fan. The back of it kind of got messed up by this piece right here that spins. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it spins and it kind of like rubbed it off. So this is gonna help it stay secure to the radiator. No! Found it? Mm -hmm. Wow, skills. Nice skills, bro. Yeah, I've got skills. So we're gonna put it through this hole. Just to find it. Come out right there. Keep your eye on it. You know where it was. Boom. This is, this is the way to do it. This is how it should be done, right? And then you grab the little circle thingies, which are right here. And... For example, see, this is hella satisfying to watch. And that's gonna pull in. And then we just cut this part off and it's on the good. So before, like I was saying, it was like moving back and forth, like how I'm showing with the flashlight and now it's not gonna do that. So that's good. Thank God. It was making a really weird rattling sound. Snip, snip, snip. 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 Can I do the honors? No. Okay. That, look at that. Mishimoto, electric fan, Mishimoto, aluminum rad. Let's go. What a fanboy. <laughs> oh, I get it, fanboy pun, you see, yeah? No, is that, is that your point? That was funny, that was funny. That was a good one, I gotta give you that one. Nice shirt, man, nice shirt. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably the hardest or most annoying part of the install is lowering the radiator back in. So along with the catalog and stuff that I found on the box, it also came with these little screws and this is actually for the fan shroud. So after you've lowered in the radiator, we're still kind of adjusting stuff, but just remember the screws go in right here. I'm not sure what size they are. It says 8.8. .8. 
Probably could just use like a nine millimeter or something. I don't know what this uses to tighten, but just kind of like hand thread these in so it can help you adjust the shroud properly. So after you've screwed in the two included screws for the fan shroud onto the radiator, you're gonna go ahead and put this hose back on and make sure you tighten this clamp. Take this plug for the expansion tank, make sure you plug it in like so. You'll, hear, you'll feel a little click. You'll feel it click a little and then that's it. You're good to go for that. All right, so after you've tightened this 10 millimeter of, um, this for the shroud, when you tighten those up and put that other hose in under the expansion tank, go ahead and push this one in as well. Make sure this clamp is loose so you can get it on there. Okay, that's on there. Um, also this one underneath. Better. All right, now that's on there. Uh, I want to put the clamp in a position where you can access the screw nicely. So that's like the best spot possible. Grab your flathead. Tighten it up. So yeah, once you tighten this, pretty much ready to tighten these down so the radiator stops moving around, dancing about. And then we can start adding coolant. And take a flathead to pull these rubber grommets out and we're gonna reuse them in the new radiator so we can push these back into place. So we're gonna go ahead and push this in, just like that. And make sure, I had to double check this one, just make sure this hose is in even more than I showed you earlier. Just make sure you push it in really good. Double check everything, make sure all the hoses are tight, the clamps, um, the plugs, the temperature sensor, all that jazz, make sure it's all plugged in. And then we can go ahead and add, uh, start the car and add some water to make sure we don't have any leaks, double check for leaks. And then uh, we're pretty much done, so yeah, let's do it. Mike's dad actually gave me some insight. He said that you're better off using BMW coolant with this radiator because if you don't, if you don't use the right coolant, I'm not sure which one is right, which one's wrong, but stick with BMW coolant because you have less chances of corroding the insides and just other parts of the radiator itself. So just make sure that you get BMW coolant and try not to cheap out on the coolant because you have a really nice radiator that's gonna last you a very long time. You just gotta take care of it. Ooh, penguin. Ugh. Cool. Check that out, guys. All right, let's do this. Moment of truth, guys. Start. Leaking. Everything looks proper. Add more coolant. Looks about right. And in order to make sure and ensure that you have a 50-50 mix, just make sure every time you fill, before you fill, you look at how much you have, you add, and then you check what you have left and then you do the exact same with the bottle with the uh, water in it. Distilled water is preferred, but any regular water is fine too. Alrighty, so we started the car, everything checks out fine. We have no leaks, we bled the system, we added the coolant, we got everything ready to go. All that's left is we have to put this right back on the top where it belongs. And we also have to go underneath the car and screw in the plastic piece that goes, basically the belly pan, if you want to call it that. So that pretty much just about does it for the install. I will do that off camera. I don't think that needs to be shown how to do it because it's pretty easy and pretty common. So now let's talk about the radiator itself. It already impressed me with the fact that when I took off my old OEM one, the plastic piece was breaking off and that's already one of the big reasons why people go for this aluminum one because it's 100% aluminum. So none of that little things like that happen because if that happens, you have to go and get a whole new radiator and that is just annoying. Also, I'm pretty sure you guys don't want plastic pieces going through your coolant 
hoses and just messing up your motor and whatever that would cause. I'm not even that sure, but that's one thing. Then that also shows proof of quality and longevity. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm never gonna have to have any issues with coolant from now on, with cooling from now on, because on S52s, on E36s, the number one thing that is trash on an S52 motor is the cooling system. So now that I have a new radiator and I have a new, well not new, but I have also have an electric fan, you know, my cooling system's really good now. I should be running really low temps and I should be okay for future mods like a turbo. So this radiator also helps for that. So my honest review, I love it. I give it like a nine out of 10. The only reason I don't give it a 10 out of 10 is because they didn't give me a sticker and I wanted a Mishimoto sticker. But at least he gave me this penguin thing for an air freshener, so yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All jokes aside, 10 out of 10, fitment was perfect. It, it was much better than a lot of aftermarket things I put on my F30, and I'm surprised how well this stuff fits. That means they really did do a lot of R&D before, uh, before making this radiator and putting it out for sale to the public. We're gonna see how long it lasts. Obviously, if we messed up on my part and like something is loose, that is not to take away anything from the radiator. That is obviously the installer's part fault so you know that's nothing to do with the radiator but once again huge shout out to f squared for sending us this radiator thank you so much for sponsoring this video if you guys want to check them out please check the description they have a lot of other things for sale on their ebay store so please do me a favor and check them out definitely something big that needs to get done on all e36s on all s52s s50s m52s m50s is the cooling system so thank you so much f squared for sponsoring this video huge shout out to mike thank you bro for helping me install this video if you are watching this i doubt you're gonna watch this at all but yeah that pretty much does it for this video for those of you that are wondering where I'm at, I'm actually at Mike's new house in New Jersey. I actually came all the way out here to New Jersey to film this video. So super excited. I was really hyped to do this one because it's finally like my first actual mod to my E36. So many more to come, guys. You know how I go. You guys know how I roll. I have a new job now. I have everything rolling. Money's coming in. The weather is trash, but once it starts getting a little bit warmer, you guys know what goes down when the weather's warm. So anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. Take care. Peace out.